Do you know all of the different sails you can fly on a catamaran, or any yacht for that matter? Do you know your code sails? What's a Jenica? What's the difference between an asymmetrical spinnaker and a Jenica? Whether you're cruising or chasing performance, by the end of this video, sails will hopefully feel a lot less confusing. Let's start with the workhorse of any catamaran, the mainsail. Many modern cats come with a high roach mainsail. The extra sail area up top gives more power, especially in lighter winds, and helps keep boats moving efficiently. This is a Vision 444. You'll notice the fan shape at the top. The great thing about this shape is that it spills wind during gusts, so it's more forgiving and safer in windier conditions if you're late to reef. The mainsail will drive you forward and push you into the wind as it is aft of the pivot point of the catamaran. To balance your sail plan, you also need to fly a foresail forward of the mast. We've done an accidental jibe here. This boat is set up with a bridal main sheet system, i.e. windward and leeward sheets in an A shape. That keeps things safe. You'll see how the boom is anchored on the windward side here, in a close hauled position. It's an efficient system for controlling your sail position and shape. Now let's hop onto the flybridge of a Lagoon 60. These yachts are more about comfort and are heavier of course. They often have square top mainsails. With their flat head and extra surface area, they deliver more power through the rig. Just watch the true wind speed though, as there is more force at the top of the sail during the gusts. Here's a Dascat with a square top, it's fast. Next, let's look at the self-tacking jib, the head sail you'll find on many modern catamarans. This sail is cut smaller with an area equal to or sometimes less than the fore triangle. Its big advantage, simplicity. When you tack, the sail slides across on its own track. No winching or sheet handling needed. For short-handed crews or cruisers who want less stress, it's a game changer. Here we are on a Lagoon 38 on a test sail off Canet de Roussillon. The self-tacker has to be the easiest sail on the boat. You head off the wind a bit, unfurl and off you go. If the wind picks up, you can reef by furling some of the sail in. It might make it harder to tack on some boats, just make sure you go about smoothly and steadily. The benefits are clear. Easy sail handling, quick manoeuvres and less effort in stronger winds. It's especially handy when sailing solo or with an inexperienced crew. It also reduces clutter in the cockpit since you're working with just one sheet rather than multiple winches. Of course there are trade-offs. Because the sail is smaller, you lose power in lighter breezes compared to an overlapping Genoa. Upwind, it's efficient and tidy, but off the wind, you'll often feel underpowered without adding a Code Zero or Genica. A few practical tips, you can back the jib by locking the track stop. This can help to push the bow around when tacking in light air. You can play around with the track stop to heave to. Trim is generally straightforward, but don't oversheat. A self-tacker likes to breathe a little to maintain boat speed. For more power, you'll need an overlapping Genoa. Unlike the self-tacking jib, this sail extends past the mast, adding drive in lighter winds. Different sizes are available, a 110%, 120% or even 150% Genoa, depending on the yacht. On boats like the XS13 or the Max Cruise Marine 48, these sails give that extra push when the breeze is light, though they do require more handling during tacks. The flip side is that you have two sheets to deal with during a tack. It does mean it is easier to back the headsail, however. In stronger winds, it's important to get your reefs in early. Many cats, such as the Outremer 52 and 55, also come with a self-tacking stay sail option, which sits behind the forestay and is used in heavier conditions. If you have a self-tacker rather than a Genoa, you are going to want to look at flying some bigger sails off the bowsprit in lighter winds. Here comes the Code Zero. A favourite among catamaran sailors is the Code Zero. Think of it as a big Genoa. It's flown off the bowsprit on a furler. It's relatively easy to furl in and out and excels in light to moderate close to wider reaching conditions. It's your go-to sail for squeezing performance when the jib just isn't enough. You'll see these flatter sails flown on big flybridge cruising cats and more performance orientated catamarans like the Windelow here. On racing code zeros, the mid girth ratio, percentage of the sail foot length, is 75% meaning the sail's widest point halfway up is three quarters of the length of its foot. In practice, cruising code zeros can be less. The higher this percentage, the fuller the sail. The lower the number, the flatter the sail. Some manufacturers like North Sails produce a range of code sails including the Code 65 and Code 55, 
the Code 65 will have a sweet spot closer to the wind than a Code 0 and a Code 55 even more so. A Code 55 has a mid girth of 55 and comes in handy if you are doing a lot of upwind sailing. They also now do a Code 50 and a Code 75. For deeper angles you might want to take a look at a Jenica. A Jenica, as seen here on the Windelow 50, is a versatile reaching sail. It bridges the gap between the Code Zero and a Spinnaker, giving good performance at reaching angles with straightforward handling. It is often furled on the bowsprit. Some manufacturers offer heavier downwind sails that are suitable for windier conditions. For example, the Code 3 and Code 5 are worth a look. The Code 3 is good for reaching in moderate conditions, the Code 5 if it is even windier. Next up is the asymmetrical Spinnaker, like the one seen here on the Vision 444. This fuller sail is designed for reaching and broad reaching, delivering lots of sail area for exhilarating downwind sailing. It takes a bit more skill to handle than a Jenica, as it is deployed out of a sock or snuffer. Similar, but used for downwind sailing, is the cruising spinnaker. This is a reasonably forgiving option, given that there is no pole. Typically cut flatter with a snuffer sock to aid in hoisting and dousing. It gives good downwind power without overwhelming the crew. Cruising symmetrical spinnakers are often made from heavier, more robust materials than racing sails, extending their life and reducing the risk of damage. Their simple, forgiving shape means they can withstand variable winds and handling by less experienced crew. If you are doing a lot of trade wind sailing, you might want to look at a parasailer or wingaker. These specialty sails are spinnakers that have a built-in wing or vent to stabilize the sail and reduce rolling. They're great for long downwind passages, keeping things under control while still delivering strong performance. These can work from about 70 degrees to 180 degrees apparent wind angle, covering the range of traditional symmetrical and asymmetrical spinnakers. This means it can be used in a wider variety of downwind and broad reach conditions. And plus, they look pretty good. That's most of the sails that you will likely come across on a sailing catamaran, except for your storm sails. Let's just take a quick look to the future with these inflatable wing sails, as seen on the Mod X70. These high-tech designs combine the aerodynamics of rigid wings with the practicality of fabric sails. Still in their infancy, but who knows? You might be needing a bigger paddleboard pump on your boat in the future. Thanks for watching and we hope you found that useful. Please leave a comment below if you feel we have missed something and see you on the next one.